This is another episode of Real People, Real Ghost Stories with my mother and my father this time. And we are all going to share the experience that we had at one specific house. This is 12996 Monarch Lane. So, um... September 15th and it was calm for probably two years everything was all fine and dandy the family and all that uh, one night dad got some disastrous news and Paula passed away um, Dad, what was what was going through your uh, what was going through your mind at that point? I don't know. Well, I was, uh, it was it was one of my uh, younger uh, siblings. Um, they uh, they said she uh, committed suicide, but uh, we're pretty sure that. Uh, it was murder because the way things went down. Uh, shortly after we uh, buried her and everything, uh, things started going black out around there. Uh, me and my si uh, little sister was really close, and we decided to keep a lot of her stuff. And uh, that was probably maybe the worst thing we could have done. And because when we did that, it, uh, some real strange things happened to my wife, mostly. I didn't figure that part out yet, but my wife. And one thing in particular to me, so I let my wife take over from here and she can start the ball rolling. My sister and all. And there's no. set them out. So we had a little, we had a bedroom upstairs in a loft. And we had taken this little closet and that's where we had put the uh, cows. And the door and the closet area where I had put them was so small that even for my height, which I'm only 5'1", you couldn't stand up and you had to crawl to get in it. And once you were in it, you still had to crawl. There was one night I was going in there and I was looking for something because we stored other things in there. And I just kept feeling like there was something else there with me that saw nothing. And I got what I was supposed to get and I went to leave but something unseen. I saw nothing. I had a hold of my ankle and I couldn't get out. And 
finally I just ended up kicking my legs and I think I turned on my flashlight that I had with me or something. And I was able to get out of that shell. But prior to that, I was laying in bed one night. And this happened more than once. It happened several times. We had a staircase in the loft bedroom where you could see over into the living room. And at the top of the stairs, it was all open. And I was laying in bed, facing the stairs up on my side, and there was literally, I could not make out who it was, but it was definitely a person sitting there, but it was more like a shadow or an apparition. It was not a genuine make out the features person. So a silhouette. Yeah, yeah, shadow figure, something. But it was really scary. And then on top of this, I started having dreams. And in these dreams, it was almost like a subconscious dream because it was seemed so real. Like I felt like I was sitting up and literally talking to this woman. That was, it was, I can't even call it a dream, it was a nightmare. She was really freaking tall, I mean tall, hovering over you tall. Had on the black Victorian style dress, really long with the collar put up to here. It was so creepy. Her hair was up in a bun and she would stand over the bed, but wouldn't say anything, just like looked at me. Would bare her teeth and have weird ass smiles and shit. And uh, one night, I don't know if it was in my dream or I was awake or subconsciously in and out of it, I don't know what it was, but I said, leave me alone, you effing bitch. What do you want? And you've, uh, you've described this situation. Uh, it was basically like an, not to poke fun here, but like an AA meeting, so to speak, or like a room. Yeah, and after seeing this woman, hovering over my bed, I also saw her again. And we were in this room, all of us, like it was myself, my stepdaughter, my sister-in-laws, who too had already passed. And my kids, and we're all sitting around in a circle, and this same woman comes out holding like this little wooden box with that same weird ass smile creepy ass fucking look on her face and i never got to see what was in the box and i still to this day if any of you can help me figure this out what this all means or where she's from or why i see this i would appreciate any answer so please, if you can, leave some comments or some suggestions for me. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I've got goosebumps right now. I can't, it's taken me so long to do this because I can't. Yeah. I mean, one of these stories is kind of hard to, uh, hard to tell after a little while. Um, you know, because it, it envelops your body, it envelops your mind. And it leaves a mystery and question. Something like that has certain meaning. Dreams have meaning. I don't know what the meaning was of this. Uh, there was something hidden that you need to figure out. That's what I'm guessing. But yeah, I, I want to know. The I want to know what the message is. And if I do remember correctly, I, we might have done some research. I mean, this is. This is a shot in the dark, but I think at one point we did look at the folklore behind a woman in a black Victorian gown. And it was basically death in disguise. Yeah, so I mean, is it someone who shows up after death? She was touring like the moon. Yeah. Or someone who shows up to let you play a small bit? This is uh this might tie into uh grandma grandma Dorothy passing away too. 
Papa's been shortly after she passed? And it's so weird that how one side of the family's death meets the other in return. Yeah, and then the lady in black in the middle. Yeah, so it might have been sent to a message. Uh, but I'll continue back to dad over here. Because you have your own personal encounter that was sort of, uh, how do you say, sharp. Yeah. You know, we were getting ready to go somewhere one, one night. Uh, again, I, I can't remember where we were going to go, but I was standing in the kitchen. I was leaning against the kitchen sink, looking out the window, and we had a butcher block full of real sharp knives on the, uh, we had a two-part counter. One was on one side of the kitchen, one was on the other. Over here, we had a butcher block full of real sharp knives, and I was leaning against, looking out the window, all at once, I heard something scoot, and I turned around, and that butcher block full of knives come flying off that counter and towards me. And if I wouldn't have jumped when I did, every one of them would have been stuck inside me. And a spirit that is, uh, uh, moves objects or decides to cause like movement is considered a poltergeist. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it was vengeful or malevolent, but it obviously had something, uh, to tell you. Basically, mm -hmm. or take vengeance on you for some reason, which we don't know what you did or if you did anything. Yeah. And there, was, there was no explanation. Uh, just like we were sitting in the front room one night, my son in law. And our neighbor. And our neighbor. Our neighbor Bob. Yeah, we were sitting in the kitchen. And uh, we were in the front room there. And the steps come down. Right, like from our loft bedroom. From our loft bedroom. CDs come flying off the dresser, clear across the bedroom, down the steps, rolling down the steps. No one was up there. No one. The CDs all over the place. My, my son in law was sitting against the wall in a recliner. A picture was hanging on uh, on the wall above his head, come flying off the wall, not scooping, flying off the wall. Is there any uh? What was the what was the picture? My daughter, my oldest daughter, and the two kids. Yeah, yeah. and the two kids and him. So, out of all the photos we had hanging up on the walls in there. Just that picture. That picture. Just that picture. Mm -hmm. So instead of it being just a random uh, and picture, uh, it was one of the people in the team. So it was out something. Yeah. And you know, it ties back to the vengeance when they did something wrong. This is your pretty good choice. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, after we moved out of there in 2012, we only lived in that house for four years. Uh, things eased down. They did. Yeah, completely.
completely moved out. Then we moved down into the house at the bottom of the hill. Yep. And then just everything dissipated. Yeah. There's... Which I was so thankful for. Which I... I don't think that it was Paula. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was Paula at all telling you anything. But it all happened right after her death. Yeah, so the significance still puzzled me. Like, I mean, there had to be something else there, something that else that died there. Her... That could be, because we never knew the history of the Yeah. I mean, that... That place, that whole community down there, ties into, say, the beginning of the 1960s. At least. At least. The lake was constructed in the 70s. Yeah, so. So, to my understanding, that used to be an old camp back in the day. Mm hmm. Yeah, a church camp. Yeah, church camp. So, what could have happened? Just about anything. We, we don't know. And there's no records, no Not events no. that are told around that area whatsoever. So there's no answers for all these questions. Oh, it's space city. Yeah. But I think this is all we have for the house at 12996 Yep, I believe so. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Please subscribe to the Punkcraft channel. Please hit that notification bell. And thank you for watching, leave a comment, bye!